Our next guest is a survivor of the attack. Nathalie Prevost was an engineering student on December 6, 1989, when Marc Lapine went on a murderous rampage at her school. She was shot four times and thankfully survived the ordeal. She joins us now from Montreal. And so, Nathalie, 25 years ago, what are you feeling? What are your thoughts this morning as you look back on that day? Feeling pretty lucky to be alive, to be able to be here with you today. Uh, a bit emotional because of the day ahead of me and um, thankful that we are talking wildly, uh, wildly, no, uh, broadly about, uh, about that today. I'm very um, uh, uh, thankful to those who are still remembering Polytechnic. Can you tell me a little bit about what's ahead for you today, what it is that you're going to be doing? Mainly two things. Uh, we are organizing a march uh, from uh, Place du 6 Décembre to Le Chalet du Mont-Royal in order to commemorate the 25th anniversary. Uh, there will be many people with us uh, commemorating and uh, bringing back uh, th those memories and trying to uh, remember, not, not, not remember, but to, uh, to tell what we, what we learned from Polytechnic, what we did from there, and uh, to, 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 uh, to, 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 to say to everybody that we are still going ahead in, in their memory. I, I, forward in their memory. Yes, Sorry. forward. No, no, no. You're doing exceptionally well. But I, we know exactly what you're tr what you're trying to say. But can you, you know, I, I was a student in Cégep, uh, just nearby, near École Polytechnique, on the other side of the mountain, and I remember that day like it was yesterday. It was, uh, and I, and I wasn't there. I wasn't shot like you were. So, for you, when you think back to that day. What's the thing, and I know you, you don't have to go into details, but what's the thing that you remember the most about that day? The most? Um, it's the, the, I've never felt that way before. I was totally frozen. My heart was frozen, my body was frozen. It was so cold outside and inside. That's the main... Um, that's the main feeling I had, and I think that probably my heart, my mind was frozen too. I was under a big shock, the biggest shock of my life. But your life has not been frozen since. It certainly has changed your life, right? Yes, it transformed my life. Tell me how. Uh, can I say it clearly? I don't know, and I don't know if I can imagine. Um, name it correctly because I, I don't have any mark of where I was and so I, I don't know what kind of adult I would have been without it because I was only 23 years old and life begins at 23 years old so the the thing I the the, the element I think that uh, was different in me is that I think that I knew then that life is very very fragile uh, that we are not immortals and knowing it at 23 is a young age to know it, to, to, to feel it. And I think that I became probably a bit more uh, aware that to, beauty of, to the beauty of life. It's led you to activism, right? Yeah, Can you tell long me? after, but yes. Yeah, can you tell me about that? Um... I was amazed that uh, the conservative uh, government wanted to abolish the uh, long gone registry. Uh, that was something we built uh, on on their for their memory, for the memory of my classmates, and uh, I was proud of it. And the uh, the long gone registry. Uh, gave me the the hope that I was living in a more a secure country and a country where we can live together without fear or with less fear of gun and of uh, those dangerous uh, situations when people who are uh, who have lost hope 
want to take a firearm in order to express their hopelessness. And with a gun, it's so quick from the idea to the realization of the project. So I was totally amazed of what was happening and I, I had the feeling that from my position and because that I was alive and that I had the, I, I think I, I have the, the possibility and the capacity to speak and to explain, I had to do something and that's what I do now in front of you today. What did you think when the Justice Minister, Peter McKay, said that we will never know why the shooter did what he did. I offered to uh, to meet him, and I'll explain. It's so clear. Maclepin told us he was uh, he hated women and all mo and feminism. And he told me, "You wrote it. It's clear, clear, clear as clear water." He he know what he 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 he, he, he left. The, he left a text, he left a letter explaining why he did it. So I'm sorry, but my uh, Minister of Justice forgot his history. I want to ask you, because as you know, uh, that in recent weeks we've been having a big discussion in this country, in Quebec, about violence uh, against women, uh, sexual assaults. This is different from uh, what you experienced, but it's still in the same big category of violence against women. Where yes. do you where do you think we are in this country in, in that respect? Uh, I hope I'm not too optimistic, but I'm very proud to see that we are now able to have a dialogue uh, together, men and women. Uh, talking about that together without uh, without accusation but with uh, with uh, realism this situation exists it's not acceptable and we have to do something together men and women and the f what what gives me hope is that now it's a clear dialogue it's not just a woman problem